right, folks. Hello and welcome to another edition of Press Play, the Washington Post's Friday video game stream at four, as always. And it's called Press Play because, say it with me, it's where the press goes to play. Uh, today we're going to be playing Slay the Spire uh, and chatting about, well, actually I'll let our guests introduce the subject. With me today I've got Taylor Telford. Introduce yourself. Say hi. Hey guys, how is it going? Uh, I'm Taylor and I am a breaking news reporter on the business desk when I'm not spending my time playing Slay the Spire. That's a great intro and that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. Teddy, how about you? Introduce yourself to the stream. Hey, I'm Teddy. And editor at the post, and I have never played Slay the Spire before. So consider me the Greek chorus for this entire hour long experience because I will be as confused or as entertained as you are, if you want. We've got a real range of perspectives here because, as I understand it, Taylor is a, a Slay the Spire head. Uh, I am right in the middle, probably, between. Taylor and Teddy, where I've played this game, I was just looking at my stats, and I believe I've, let's take a look right now, I have slain 137 enemies and six bosses, I've climbed just about 150 floors, I've played for you know, just shy of six hours, uh, but I also haven't played in months, uh, probably more than months, maybe a year at this point. Uh, so I will be rediscovering this game live with Eddie, who's coming in basically with no experience at all. So I'm going to get started, but I'm going to be doing this at the most kind of basic tier, uh, starting from kind of a, a standard quest, starting with the base character, the ironclad. Um, that's exactly, that's what I'm going to get up to right now, embarking. Uh, Teddy, what have you heard about this game? I heard a lot, but my headset is dying right now, so I'm going to switch headsets while I do this smoothly. Uh, and hold on, let me switch real quick while maybe Taylor can give us a little bit of a rundown of Sleep and Spider while I switch. All right, Taylor, you're in the oh, man. you're in the hot seat. Tell us tell us about your experience with Slay the Spire. Oh man, I'd be happy to. Well, let's see. Before I played Slay the Spire, I should just say that like I was not a kid that grew up with games. I was banned from having games as an older child, and then I have a younger brother who was allowed to have games because he was like eight years younger than me. And at that point, I was just kind of like, whatever. I'm not gonna be a game person anyway. I don't want to. But then. I kind of came to games later in life through, like, Breath of the Wild and Hollow Knight and other kind of adventure-type games. And so Slay the Spire did not come naturally to me, necessarily. And I actually watched my partner and his friends play it a bunch for literally months over the summer, thinking, like, okay, this is not for me. But the thing about it that I think is really, really cool is that as a deck-building game, it just really, like... It really makes you think about your choices in a way that I had not really been confronted with in gaming as somebody who is more of like an inexperienced masher kind of player. Play the Spire really rewards you for as much as you're willing to kind of like slow down and really consider all of your options. And once we get into characters, I think that that aspect of it is really interesting because Ironclad is the basic character that you start with, but... The other ones have, in my opinion, a lot more uh, interesting kind of dynamics and mechanics to them. I am personally the worst at Ironclad, actually, so it's kind of a bummer that we have to play Ironclad and my friends are going to troll me if I give you bad advice. It's it's totally fine because this, this first run, it's going to be bad for me, too, because I haven't played this game in a while. I just need to reintroduce myself with the most basic character available. Um... I remember, I think I was pretty bad with the other classes that I unlocked because I, I've already unlocked whatever the second character is and the third character. One of those I tried and just like flunked out immediately. Couldn't get anything done. Um, and the other, and I don't remember what order this was in because this was probably a year ago. 
uh, that one I was kind of more, or I, I was starting to get the the mechanics at least. Um, but yeah, it, I definitely need the like the soft, the the gentle on ramp back into this game, which is why I'm going Ironclad, even though it is for sure <laughs> the most basic class. Um, okay, so Mikhail, hopefully you can hear me now. <laughs> Yeah, we can hear you just Okay, fine. great. I'm still in the party. I just forgot to charge my Steel Series last night after playing, um, you know, for a long time. <laughs> um, the, 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 I, I wanted to answer your question from before, which is just to say that my only contract of Slate Aspire is that it's like Hearthstone, um, but I also have not played Hearthstone. I mean, how much deck building is in this? Are people looking up? builds online to get the best i mean i'm sure there's probably the best builds for characters but like i get a little uh get a little queasy about you know intense card game builds i'd rather just um you know press x and swing the hammer or, or something but so what what it you know how complicated is it this might be a better let's see well it can't be that complicated because i learned it having like no experience with this kind of game but the thing i would say that makes it like accessible and also keeps it from being like busted in the ways that i'm told some other kind of deck building games are is that the way that like the way that they've designed it the way that the cards are and the way that like the differences in all like the mechanics and the characters work is like any given card could be really good in any deck but because it's randomized like there's just no guarantee that you're going to encounter the kind of stuff that you know is going to let you make the pairs that make things really really busted and so it's just completely new every time and you like i have personally learned from experience that it is like there's just no cards that are good in every single situation there are cards that are like really great you know depending on like what you're trying to do but it's really like that's why I was talking about, I guess, like, the importance of the choices. Like, it really just builds as, you know, a roguelike game. You get a new card every time you do a fight. And so you've got to kind of pick a direction really early on and pick a thing about the character that you're going to leverage if you want to try and make it through all three acts. And I guess maybe, I don't know how complicated that is in comparison to other, like, deck building games because I honestly haven't played any of them. Um, but yeah, I think that like the fact that it's just, you know, it, it goes through one run, you die at the end, you can always try again and you're just never guaranteed to get like the same combination of cards at any given run. So it just feels like really new every time. Got yeah, it. I think, oh, sorry, you go, Mikhail. The other thing I'll say is that this feels different from something like Hearthstone and my experience with Hearthstone is pretty limited. Um, but on the screen right now, you probably see something called the world of goop and there are all these like random encounters that happen or that you can opt into while you're playing in the course of playing it like a roguelike um going through the map going through the levels um and that feels distinct from hearthstone where you sort of have to make decisions kind of outside of what feels like the game itself usually when you think about like the game of a deck builder it is what cards do I have? Am I in combat? Am I defending myself? And stuff like that. And here you're forced into scenarios where you need to make decisions that kind of build out the world a bit, give you a sense for the the kind of lore of the world, um, and that does not directly always relate to kind of gameplay mechanics. Um, so that's how I would kind of distinguish Slay the Spire. Here, in, in this it. case, actually looking at it right now, I'm going to gather some gold and, and trade out some HP for it um, because I think I'm. Oh yeah, be greedy. That's yeah, a, exactly. that's a good move. Yeah. So uh, as the resident Greek chorus, what's the what's the end game here? How do you beat a run? I don't know what your words to use. Oh yeah, run is good. So basically, this is kind of lame because we're on like the very new file, I think. So we're not doing the more like the core component, which is usually there are three things that you have to do in order to like unlock the next level of difficulty, which is like the ascensions. Uh, and so 
Uh, yeah, the game is broken up into three acts, and in each act, you're, you know, doing a combination of fighting, like, regular enemies, uh, getting chances to, like, heal or smith your cards. There are random events, you can buy stuff, and then there's a boss fight at the end of each act. Uh, and in the meantime, you're also picking up relics along with doing your deck building, and relics just have different effects uh, that impact, you know, different aspects of, you know, your attack or your block or give you different effects when you do different things. Uh, and so the objective is just to beat all of the bosses and make it through all of the acts and indeed slay the spire. But actually, I think on this run, that's not on the table for us because you can only do it after you have, like, unlocked uh, the, the ascensions and gotten the keys. So maybe I'm wrong, Mikhail, but I think that today we're just trying to beat all the bosses. Yeah, today for sure, th these are just going to be pretty standard runs. Um, I've forgotten completely about ascension stuff like that i don't even know if i've gotten that far when i was still playing the game pretty uh regularly so for now i think teddy the most that you'll see is just stuff that gives you a sense of like the general flavor of the game which is these kinds of combat scenarios making decisions in the game about do i defend do i attack how do i read the opponent uh and kind of just moving through the world choosing to go to a merchant or, you know, choosing one of these randomized scenarios or choosing to fight, et cetera, et cetera. I always find with games like this, there's an amount of time required before I actually get hooked. Was that the case for you, Taylor or, or Mikhail, or is it, was it just uh, like pure op yeah. opium early on? I think once you see, once you have a run that shows you the light and you feel like you're getting away with something, as my partner likes to put it, I think that's when it becomes really sticky. This is notoriously a, like, just one more run kind of situation because every, <laughs> you know, thing is full of hope and possibility and, you know, your fate can change very quickly depending on, you know what decisions you make and, you know, whether or not you get lucky. And so I would say that once I kind of was willing to cast aside my pride and recognize that, like, mostly I was just going to be losing 99% of runs all the time and that, like, it was not about failure. It was about growth, learning how to play the game. Then I really liked it. So it didn't take this too sounds... long, but it was humbling to get good at. This sounds like Hades, which... which... Uh, has like scarred my brain for how much how many hours I put into that. <laughs> did you did you like Hades? I did. I did a lot. I just did. I like what it did to my life in the process of playing it. Probably not. Like I I don't I don't like when I feel completely. Uh, you know, I don't like when I feel as if there's a ball and chain around my ankle. And with Hades, when I was playing the game, I you just you just have to keep playing runs and you're only going like you're only going to get better and if you it felt like a very tight obsessive amount of time to iteratively get better and i knew if i walked away from a week i would have for a week i would have thrown it all away so in that sense i did it i got done with it <laughs> we're we're on to greener pastures but it was a great camp Taylor, have you played Hades? No, actually. And that's on our list of games to try. I've heard really good things about it. And I've watched the trailer a couple times in the Switch shop. <laughs> and the art looks really cool, which I'm really big on art. That's like, honestly, like as a, as a gamer outside of like my relationship with Slay the Spire, I would say the thing that I care the most about is usually like the art as opposed to like, you know, combat or like mechanics or something like that. And so... Yeah, sorry, my leg is stroking out over here. One sec. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I think you'd probably love Hades. The art, the art direction of Hades is, is amazing. Um, okay. Well, while Mikhail is, uh, Mikhail, what would you say best description of your like of your early goings right now? It's going well. Um, I was actually about to ask the same of both of you, how it looks like I'm doing. I feel like I'm doing all right. Um, I forgot how long these levels were, like how much you needed to do to get to the end of, uh, I guess, uh, um, I don't know what you would call. I don't know. I forget what the vocabulary is for uh, these sequences of levels. 
Um, the the floors, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's what they call it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I think I'm, it's pretty early right now. I think I've sacrificed maybe a bit more HP than I should have in some places, and I'm glad I'm getting it back. Um, yeah, I think I'm doing all right. I might not fight an elite here um, and rest instead. What's uh, what's your deck look like? I think maybe you should fight. Ugh, I think I already, I already, unfortunately, opted to rest. But here's okay. So now, it's a question of do I heal for thirty percent of my max HP, which I like to do, or do I upgrade a card in my deck? I'm at sixty one out of eighty eight HP, which doesn't feel great necessarily, given that maybe I'm like a third of the way through this floor. Taylor, what would you do in this situation? Oh, you should definitely smith. Uh, my friends will troll me relentlessly if I let you heal at 60%. Uh, all my <laughs> friends are actually aggressive non-healers, just generally, and, you know, blocking is for babies. I'm not of that mentality, but you will lose if you don't smith enough. And 60 HP, like... I am glad you can kind of ride lower with the HP if you want anyway, because it's going to heal a little bit, but 60 is so much. Definitely. I would not worry about it. You should smith okay. that bash. All right. Who am I? What am I smithing here? I've got a bunch of strike cards. I've got a bash. Uh, let's see. Um, got, let's see. I, I don't. Ooh, uh, the, the upgraded bash is good. I think I remember Rampage being good when upgraded. Um, let's see. Mikhail, while you're deciding, I just want you to know that chat thinks you should be incredibly aggressive and fight the elite and not be resting right now. So I know. I, just I'm some sorry. feedback. It's, I would feel very bad if I got owned like on my first elite, so I'm just casually sidestepping it. So... But I, what am I upgrading here? Do I upgrade? Uh, I know the bash, chat. Bash, bash, bash. All right, it's done. Bash is upgraded. No, I'm Let's just... go. It'll pay dividends for sure. It'll shorten your fights. I I believe it. Okay, this is gonna be. Oh, you have a you have a right. fixer here in Taylor. I. Let's see. Uh... Uh oh, oops. Well, whatever. All right, no blocking. I'm I'm already kind of living up accidentally to the 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 demands of chat. I'm not blocking. I'm mostly <laughs> attacking. I actually I'm oh, I'm like just short of being able to kill this guy, unfortunately. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah, These I'm, guys I'm, infuriate I'm, me. Please one. don't take my money. <laughs> Although, actually, now that I look at it, I I think he was weakened, and I think I would have been able to kill him, but you live and learn. All right. Gosh, okay. Well, what does this mean, then? This means you're... No way, no, you're still gone. Never mind. Now, now he's dead. Just got him. Um, now I need... Nice, let's go. Oh, anger. Anger is my card. I always get anger. Anger is do you such wanna, a good. So anger the way Do you want to talk works, more about that? Uh yeah, I do. The way anger works is you play anger. If I remember correctly, you do damage and then you get another anger in your deck. And then if you're able to keep playing anger, eventually you get a deck full of anger moves. And anger is like it doesn't cost you anything to play anger. You can just be be mad, and you do an attack that doesn't cost anything that keeps adding more attacks to your deck. It's such a good card. I think uh, I think it does cost you things to be angry. I think it costs you your relationships. You know your loved ones, all right. people you know. Uh, upgrade two random cards. Sure. Okay, upgraded two blocks for me. Whatever. You'll be glad about it later. Yeah, but I did lose HP. I'm now at 36 out of 88, which 
I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. You're going to get to heal after this. It'll be okay. That's true. Uh, I actually am... I run directly into two heals here. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to go right on this map. Gold White Beast Statue. Okay. Nice. That's cool. That means you should just use all your potions, because you'll keep getting them. Yeah, that's true. Don't have to save them. Teddy... While you're playing, you pick up relics, which kind of buff you and create certain status effects and whatnot uh, that that kind of help you as the game proceeds. And I just got one that gives me potions all the time. Um, got it. Okay. Now, now that I'm at 36 out of 88, I do kind of want to heal. I want to rest. Do I? I mean, have... I'm 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 pro resting, but I I don't. Do I have the, the blessing of, of chat to rest here to actually get some HP? I, I think it's cool to rest. All right. My friends will still tell you not to rest at 36, but they're crazy. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm not I'm not that adventurous. I I'm gonna play it slow and steady. Okay, let's go. Uh all right, so while you take a bit of a nap... Oh, wait, no, now you're playing a Elite, right? No, you're not. So I, the naps are... They're very quick in the game. You don't sleep for that long. That's not very uh, realistic. It is not, yeah, not a real-time nap. All right. You know the block? It did help me. I'm pretty happy about having taken that, that extra block. You got quite a quite a large amount of uh, gelato you're facing right there. It's so true. This is the nastiest gelato that's just like a gray blob. Not good. The charcoal. Oh. Probably Icelandic. Um, okay, wait. So while you're fighting the charcoal blobs, we haven't even really gotten into the fact that Taylor is a, a, a writer for the post that does not write about video games, which I feel like we should talk about. Uh, Taylor, do you want to tell chat and everybody watching what you do for your day job besides Slay the Spire? Yeah, sure. In between runs of Slay the Spire, <laughs> uh, you can find me uh, writing breaking news stories for the post business section. So I'm kind of jumping on whatever the crazy business thing is of the day, whether it is stock market crash or supply chain issues like we are here to talk about today. Uh, probably, if you've been trying to buy anything at all anywhere in the last, oh, I don't know, six months, you've probably noticed that supply chain stuff is messed up. But especially, uh, I have seen up close and personal the impacts of the chip shortage. Uh, my partner slept outside a micro center three times over the course of several months over the summer in pursuit of an NVIDIA graphics card. And while he did get it, I can say that it does cost you a lot to have to pursue things this way. And so the state of gaming will be pretty desperate for a while to come. I have so many questions. Did he did he camp? Was it a full just sidewalk situation? Was you said Nvidia like was it? It was there... a folding chair from our deck. <laughs> Is this a store? Or Not a even factory? a tent or anything. Oh, sorry. Is this a store or a factory? It's a store. It's like a store in a strip mall in Rockville, I think. It's Micro Center. It's just a big computer supply place. And he was building a, a, a desktop computer, and he really wanted a 3090, which is the highest tier of NVIDIA graphics cars, which are the scarcest thing in the universe right now, just like they were earlier in the year when he got it. Uh, so he went truly through hell and high water to get it. And he said every morning when the store opened, there were dozens of other people there and that many other, he wasn't alone, like sleeping there to get this graphics card. And he only got it because he won a lottery. Oh, I, cause I was going to ask if they developed a system, you know, some type of meritocracy or whatever to determine who gets the, the NVIDIA card. Wow. Oh Yeah. 
it was some combination of like when you got there you were given a number and then they were going to pull numbers and certain people got to go in and by the third time that my partner had slept there he had definitely developed an inside source who told him when the shipments were coming what days he should go to micro center i think it was a thursday he finally got it you know you know developing an inside source after you know, on the third day of, of what is essentially like beat reporting at that point is pretty impressive. And I think we should probably hire your boyfriend to work for the post because that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty great. Um, wow. So, okay. So can you, so, and then with the supply chain global conundrum that we're all facing, people can't get PlayStation 5s, they can't get their fancy Xboxes, they can't get anything right now. Um, or some can if you just sleep outside of tech stores. Uh, what, um, what, would be your, what would be your advice to chat and people watching who are slamming up against the supply chain issue? Maybe, you know, people know that it's a problem, but like, what's the latest? What are, you know, is it, is there a respite coming soon from our Los Angeles shipping container friends or, or no? Oh, man, I wish that I had better news to offer everybody. But unfortunately, it was pretty gloom and doom when I was brushing up for this, trying to see if there was any hope for anybody and also frantically Googling Silk Song news as I do as part of my Googling practices. And I'm sad to say there's no Silk Song news and there is not really expected to be any kind of improvement in the supply chain and chip shortage situation through basically the end of this year and into 2023. Uh, it's a really complicated situation that has certainly not benefited from all of the kind of milestone of shortages that are going on right now, whether you're talking about the kind of like lulls in productivity that have happened because of staffing shortages because of COVID or because of labor market conditions. There's the fact that there are just not very many companies that are kind of up to task and resource to be able to make the chips in the first place. And there are other companies that are trying to get in the game, but it's going to take them like one to two years basically to kind of develop the kind of supply chain networks and like prowess to be able to meet the explosive demand that has been happening while we're all like pent up at home in the pandemic. So yeah, the news is not great, friends. Great. Well, more more bad news uh, for for chat and for all of us. Um, I have not actually been too affected by the hardware supply chain issues. Mikhail, have you? Are you fishing for a graphics card or um, anywhere in between? Are you having trouble? I think at some point. I will definitely be looking to build a PC or get like a, a custom built PC. And at that point, yeah, I think things are going to be looking pretty grim for me. Um, thankfully, not really on the hunt right now for anything. I feel pretty good with my setup so far. Um, but as soon as it comes time to get a new PC, I know I'll be in trouble. I actually... I, I assume this is affected by the same thing, but I, I ordered a new laptop for myself. It's like a work laptop, maybe a month ago. Um, and the website status page is still telling me it's processing my order, that delivery is, you know, not really certain when that, that laptop is going to come in. So I have kind of a bad feeling about when my, my shiny new MacBook is going to arrive. Uh, and I think it, Probably has a lot to do with the supply chain, unfortunately. Hmm. I have a cousin who... Oh, yeah. It's been really tough to get electronic for a while now. Oh, sorry. I, I To add on to that, I have, a, I have a cousin who might be watching the stream right now because he favorited my tweet, um, who started a job during the pandemic. He's in high school, and he got his job to save money to build a PC and... You can imagine how frustrated it's been <laughs> like to get your job at a Greek restaurant. I think he works at a Greek restaurant and to now, you know, to not be able to really spend that money on what you need because it doesn't exist or it's not available. So mm. pouring out for John Paul. Um, <laughs> but anyway, sorry, Mikhail, uh, how's, 
So it's fire going. Going pretty well. I just made an offering to some purple blobs, and I didn't think through that I maybe should have given them a, a more premium offering. And so they seemed pretty bored. But I got rid of a block card from my deck. Uh, I was kind of bought, being bogged down by some of those uh, defensive, defensive cards. So altogether, things seem to be going pretty well. I'm at another juncture where I need to decide before going up against the big boss, do I smith or do I rest? Uh, I'm at 53 out of 88, so not as bad as I could be. But if I beat the boss, I will probably be in pretty bad shape. I kind of like the idea of you know, buffering myself right now with a bit of health, but I'm curious what chat thinks on the subject and Taylor, what you think about, you know, should I Smith here or should I rest right before going up against the big bad? Oh man. I definitely think you should Smith since you're going up against the slime boss. I All think right. 53 is pretty good and I'll explain it when we get there, but it, you basically just have to take one big hit and then you're home free. Probably. So definitely Smith. All right. Who, who, what am I smithing here? I like, I always like, listen, anger, love it. Love smithing anger. I've also got some great, got thunderclap. I've got combust. Got a lot of good, like, big moves. Um, so I don't know. What is everyone thinking? What am I, what, what am I boosting here? I think Thunderclap would be a pretty good investment. The Vulnerable will really help you out. Done and done. I'm just, I'm taking your advice nice. immediately. There's nothing, I have no doubt. <laughs> I trust you implicitly. All right, let's go. Bash this guy. Too easy. I don't need block here, I don't think. So, what's he doing? Uh, so, oh, Teddy, a, a, a nuance you might have missed and that I've sort of forgotten about as I'm getting back into this game, you can tell what the opponent's next move is going to be. And that helps you plan what you're doing next. So right now, over the slime's head, I can see there's a purple swirl. And if you hover over the, the slime boss, it says, this enemy intends to inflict a powerful negative effect on you. But that is not an attack. So... I don't need to use like a defensive card in this situation. If I remember correctly, I might be like messing up this explanation, but um, I, I would be told if it were going to take an attack on me and I can see right now that it's not and that instead it's going to inflict some sort of status effect. So I, that helps that you is, plan your next move. And it, you know, I, so I almost bought Slay the Spire in November, but then I ended up reviewing League of Legends Rune King for launcher, and that was the same turn-based combat. So I, I just kind of thought, well, and, and I was actually right. I thought that after reviewing Rune King, I'd get kind of sick of turn-based combat. Um, so I, it's been it's been pushed back on the wait list. It, I don't know if you guys saw, but Slay the Spire went on sale. Um, this is not sponsored because the sale's over, but it went on sale over the holidays, and it was like it was cheap it was like six bucks or seven bucks it was a really good deal but but i i just kind of skipped it because uh rune king has played out my turn-based mm. um, yeah itch let's see sorry i'm in the i'm in the i'm i'm having oh, like yeah. a, a strategy brain like one of those gifs where you can see the numbers and and mathematical <laughs> formulas floating around that's what's happening with me right now you know, I, I feel kind of bad that you're beating up. I can't get the blob's name. Oh, the blob doesn't even have a name. I don't know. It looks kind of sleepy. Like, do you really need to be messing with this blob? Like, maybe you could just go around him. Looks like kind of a nice guy. Uh, He's about to crush me or try to crush me. Yeah, he's about to hit me with 30 for 35 points of damage. So, uh, I think, really I think you might need a insanely good point that you just made teddy but um yeah. no this guy is bad news for me i think you have to ask yourself who who swung first because that that might get you to uh to re reconsider whether this person is actually uh aggressive i'm joking i'm joking Mikhail. 
Yeah, you better be. <laughs> All right, I feel pretty. I feel pretty good about this, honestly. Oh, this is actually. Why are you defending? He's not even hitting you. He was about to hit me, and he he. Well, okay, he's gonna hit me now, but. Uh, he's I, gonna hit you now, and you should take the hit. Because here's the thing: <laughs> Do you know how this boss works? I'll, I'll, no, I'll right I'm back. serious. He's gonna split at seventy. He's the the whole thing with the slime bosses is that it's just going to subdivide into smaller guys every time that the guy reaches half HP. Yeah. And so you want to split them as low as you can, because otherwise you're going to be in big trouble. So don't take him over 70. Uh, oh, man, I think your combust is going to take him over 70. So we're going to see how this goes. Yeah. Oops. Uh... It's all right. We're going to get through this. <laughs> yeah, we are truly... I should not have done... I shouldn't have taken the, the potion that gave me 12 health or 12 block. Because when I split him, it delayed the block, and I forgot it. Or delayed his attack, which I, I forgot about. But, um... Cool. All right, we'll see. Thank you. This... Thank you to Chad for giving me the slime box's name. I, I, I know nothing about Slay the Spire, and I'm slowly trying to learn. Okay, Thunderclap. Let's... Let's go. Thunderclap is so good. Um, do I attack again or do I block? This is tough. Um, God, getting th this being my first run in a long time, I've like lost my instinct for this game. Uh, I feel like I should block here. You gotta, you gotta fix it right there on camera. Ready, Taylor is ready to. Taylor, what am I doing here? Am yeah. I using my defend plus or am I using my bash? My bash is going to use up all my energy, so it's either bash or a def or a block and a strike. I got I have two options in that. I think oh man. Is it going to split him if you like hover over the bash? I think it'll show you how much damage it's going to do because of the vulnerable. If you can split him, I think that you should do it. But if you can't, then you shouldn't do it. But it's tiny on my computer, so it's hard for me to tell. I'll deal 15. I should split it. Yeah, now that I'm looking at it, I think... Let me see. Yeah, I should be able to split the left one, which is poised to do more damage right now. So I'll, I'll do that. I'll do exactly that. Okay, and the attack was interrupted. There we go. I'm not doing too hot in terms of HP. 21 out of 88 does not feel great, but... This... That's all right. You'll heal after this act if you make it out. That's true. <laughs> all right, I got to think about... What, are, what this is going to be Gain strength at the end of your turn. Uh... I wish I had told you to take that at the beginning because it stacks up every, every uh... round or whatever. So uh -oh. it won't help you too much to take it this close to the end of the fight, but you could. You know, I I want to end the fight victoriously, so I might as well just pull out all the stops. Let's see. What am I doing here? Well, I'll use my free angers, because... I'll split that slime. Okay. Hey, look. Taylor, you were saying that there are also a bunch of other characters here, right? So if you don't like, um, like, if you don't like Mr. Kaka, which I know is not his name, but he just said that. What, what, uh, who are the other characters and who do you like playing? Um, all right, let's see. So there is the silent, which I really like a lot. I think that's probably the easiest character to win with semi-consistently. The silent is fun because it has like two main directions that you can do, which are either a poison deck or a shiv deck. Uh, poison is really, really fun because there's just a lot of different mechanics where you can pile it up really, really quickly and then kill people. Um, and then I would say my other, other favorite is the defect, uh, which is a kind of robot creature that has a bunch of orbs where you can channel all of these different effects, and the more orbs you rack up, the harder it is for anybody to touch you. 
So both of those, I think, are really, really fun and just a little more dynamic than Ironclad, but maybe my friends would disagree. Ironclad does feel very uh, sword and shield. I mean, always holding a sword, but just very basic standard attack man um, with yeah, not a lot else going on. A default fighter, for sure. Cool. Mr. Uh, Krakow is not his name. I'm sorry. Right. Sorry. <laughs> oh my God. Um, huh. Okay. Well, this looks rough, I, Mikhail. This looks kind of close. Uh, I don't think it's going to be close anymore. Or, I mean, it, I, it is close in, if you compare the HP, but I think I'm about to deal the finishing blow. So, yeah, oh, I nice. feel, pretty, feel pretty good. Um,. Also on a on a kind of oh hold on I need to choose I need to choose the card that I get after this win. Um, hmm. I don't Zah. know if you can you two see the three cards I have an option of choosing. Yeah, no, we can. Taylor, any recommendations? sort of keen on brutality because it takes nothing to play it. The the card in the top left corner, Teddy, if you haven't uh, like... Sorry, I was having technical difficulties over here. No, 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 all good. Do you have a, a strong feeling about any of these three cards? Sorry, my thing is lagging a little bit, so I actually can't see where you're at right now. Oh, no. I mean, I... Mikhail, I like Brutality, too, even knowing very little about the game. Okay. Oh, um, you didn't take Demon Form? Take Demon Form! Okay, oh, well, there you go. Teddy, I'm overriding your decision. I'm taking Demon Form. Go ahead. Yeah. Teddy, All right, let's you. have some fun. This will be cool. <laughs> okay, what relic am I doing? Gain blank at the... Uh, you can no longer rest at rest sites. No thank you. Whenever you lose HP, draw one card. I'm into that. Okay, Chad Advice also said Demon Form, so I'm glad that we, you know. Okay, perfect. Are... I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take the Runic Cube Relic here for whenever I lose HP, I'll draw a card, <laughs> which seems busted, but yeah, I'm excited to use that. Um, Taylor, I have a along these same lines. Have you ever played the game Dicey Dungeons? No, I have not. I think if you like Slay the Spire, you would get a kick out of Dicey Dungeons, which um, okay. I'm going to have a very hard time describing this game. You are trapped on a dice-themed game show, and there are <laughs> wow. six characters, I think, um, each of whom has like a, a special mechanic around dice rolls. And so... You roll a die, just like a six-sided die, and depending on that dice roll, you can use certain attacks within your repertoire. Um, it's it gets a lot more complicated than that. There's no uh, it's so it's such a difficult game to describe, but it is very much in the same thread, uh, very similar to Slay the Spire. Caught me at around the same time. Dicey Dungeons might have been the game that actually got me off nice. of Slay the Spire. Um, so highly recommend. Wow, okay. I don't know if there's any any love in chat for Slay the Spire, but um, I hope they'll back me up. All right. Oh, I'm fully... I forgot that you fully heal after a floor. Okay, I didn't... If I... That did not process for me. Okay. So now you're all good. Um, Ooh, what am I doing here? Should I try demon form? Just blast right through it. I'm not going to be able to do anything else if I use demon form here. Do it, do it. All right, <laughs> let's do it. Um, I love Taylor's outlook for this game. This makes me want to buy it and just be completely reckless. I am going to... Okay. It pays off. You you die of like being weak basically if you don't be greedy and take the damage that's required. So yeah, that's it's true. also just so much more fun to take all the risks and get the stuff. Yeah. Uh 
Okay. I'm just going to do all the attacks that deal the most damage here. Okay, while Mikhail's going complete full force, oh, guns yeah. blazing. Uh, Taylor, what... I don't even know if you can answer this question, but I'm still going to ask it. Taylor, what stories are you working on nowadays? Um, let's see. Well, I might have to stay, uh, which I think is pretty good news for everybody. I don't think that. Teddy, you've asked, you've asked such a sensitive journalistic question that Discord can't even <laughs> handle it. Yeah, I think we just got, I think we just got shut down by, by someone. I don't know who. Um, I, I thought that was just me for a second because I'm streaming from my phone, and I don't know how much to address that. But I right, let's let's try again. Let's see if the the overlords can can block this comment from Taylor. Um, Taylor, what are you working on again? Oh man, uh, I w I was working on a story about how corporate America has basically finally conceded that uh, flexible work and hybrid work is here to stay, and that the nine to five is dead, which is actually pretty cool. I think. I think personally, as a culture, we've seen enough of nine to five. Everybody agrees that that's not what's best for most people anymore. So yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, you know that when the corporate types are adopting to something. It's mostly because they think that it's like an area for growth and opportunity. And so I think that it'll be really cool as like an equalizer in companies to be able to hire people for, you know, the best person for the job, regardless of whether or not they want to live in New York or something like that. So, yeah, remote work. Yeah. Here to stay. <laughs> huh. Well, uh, take that, New York. No, I uh, do. You, you know, there's so many parameters of of that discussion is it you know are people talking about four days a week or are people talking about just remote work or like, what are the options on the table it sounds like the it sounds like from what you're saying it's very much you know working remote from wherever home is rather than having to live on the east or west corridor which sounds like an improvement to start but any other you know specific yeah. topics Nobody knows how it's going to work, I think, is the main thing. Like, pretty much the threshold that we're at or corporate America is at is that everyone is acknowledging that the demand for some degree of flexible work is such that you are not going to get or retain employees if you don't do that. But that's kind of as far as everybody's gotten. And most companies have, like, kind of dramatically different approaches to this based on what kind of company they have. And one of the things I've seen is that the companies that are more like person based or culture based, like investment banks or like Google or Meta or something like that, where they're really priding, you know, themselves and getting their like value out of person to person interactions and innovation and synergies and that kind of stuff. Uh, the they're the ones words. who really want to see people back in the office. But companies that maybe pre-pandemic didn't think that they could do stuff remotely are hearing from their employees that that's what they want to stick with. And a lot of those companies are actually making that change and saying, you know what? No real estate costs for us. Our employees aren't commuting anymore. They can start working right away. There's basically just lots of benefits to it on both sides for the companies that can afford to look at it that way, but it really depends on what kind of industry you're in. So lots mm. remains to be seen, definitely. Mm. All right, we're at a we're at a store right now, and I want to get everyone's take on this. Is there anything here at the merchant's table that looks compelling? I'll to me, there's that. not really that much. Maybe the twin strike that's on sale that's super cheap, but other than Maybe that, the I shrug it off. Shrug it off, you think? Yeah. I, how much draw do you have? You just have the war cry, right? Yeah. Slay, uh, I, I think that shrug it off is a good block card, and you really are going to need the draw. So that would be my pick. All right. 
Uh, none of these, all of these artifacts are like vaguely, or the relics. None of them are like that useful. Decisions, I like how these decisions are like mildly complicated and Taylor can look at all the cards in the span of, uh, you know, a delayed few seconds because we all have delay here in the streams. And mm. it it's like a split second decision of you should pick that with utter certainty. certainty. I wish I had that with my life. <laughs> Well, yeah, my friends would tell you that I play too fast and that that's bad. So honestly, I'm not so sure that you should be admiring this quality in me. But I don't know. I didn't even know that we all like shrug it off. So that was pretty easy. All right, let's go. Let's test our, our newfound power and get into a fight. Okay. Me Oof. Uh, you know what I'm gonna gain? I'm gonna gain some strength here. Let's see, what potions do I have? None, okay. None that are useful in this moment. Oof. Okay, they're all buffing up right now. So I'm glad I played demon form. Oh my god, now oh. I have so many cards. Did you guys notice that the, the enemy also says Ka as well? It's just a communication of birds at this point. I don't know why this is the detail I'm grabbing onto, but this is just what I choose to yeah, to dissect. Yeah, you really you have really caught on to the, the bird like nature of a lot of these characters. Although I don't I also don't know that Maybe I don't know the deep lore. I don't think my character was saying "caw." I think there was maybe it was a an item they had used. Oh, that yeah. makes sense. And they were then okay. Sure, we'll go with that. There actually is a relic that makes you "caw." You'll be happy to know. There's an event that you can get where it's like this strange creature that tells you it can replace your face. And they give you a 50% chance to get a good face and a 50% chance to get a bad face. And sometimes one of the good faces is a caw relic that's just the little bird head. And at the beginning of every fight, you just go, caw, caw. And that's all it does. I want to know, I want to know the inspiration here. I really do. I, I just, you know, I'm just, I like dialogue. So that's what I'm always picking apart <laughs> in games. trying to decide on my next next play here uh i feel like i should well hold on do you know how these guys work the mechanic that if you can stun them and they won't hit you it's been so long um, okay i think that that twin strike would be a good choice because it hits in multiples so basically if you hit any of these guys three times then they'll like be stunned and they won't be attacking you anymore uh, and then they also take more damage. So you should definitely, the next time that you get a chance, because I know you're out of energy now, hmm. hit him three times and stun him. Okay, that's useful to know. I was hoping that my uh, combust would do the trick on some of them. Oh, there but... we go. You got him anyway. There we go. Yeah, I did get the, I got the middle one who was going to do the most damage to me. And now I'm going to thunderclap all of them. He looks pretty knocked cold. What's that? The the middle one, you really knocked him out. I mean Oh yeah. That was a that was a stunner of a hit. He's anyways. I'm admiring the animation. Uh, anger is really crushing it for me here. I don't know if this game is teaching good lessons on that. Um let's see. Alright, well, you know, well pretty good I, I do also want to mention i actually haven't played it but mikhail has yeah. taylor i think he would really like loop hero but i saw mikhail... the trailer for that game at indie world and i've been waiting for it to come out is it out and is it good it's out on switch and cool. right i think yeah i think it's out on switch okay um it, it was originally out on pc and mikhail i know you played it for a bit um it looks it looks Great. I, I just never gave it a chance last year. I, so. Unfortunately, I have not played Loop Hero. I have the code. It's 
on my Steam account, and it's just wow. sitting there like so many other games. Uh, I'll get to it someday. It's one of those. I have a I have a list. I think I've shown it before, maybe on a previous stream. Um, I have like a written jotted down list of like games I need to get to this year, and it is so long, and I am not playing all of those games. Uh, there's just no way. And Loop Hero is among them, unfortunately. I get that. I mean, that's exactly where it's sitting for me, too. So, All right, I think we might have time for... We're going to fight One. this enemy, and then there's elite, an elite coming right after. How do we feel about that? And then... Oh, yeah. That seems call good. Call the day? Yes, sir. At least call the day for stream but Mikhail your journey still goes on you could you could you know the story has just begun you could finish it off yeah I'll keep this play I'll keep this playthrough going uh this it's honestly such a good game I just I at some point I got off track I had such a good time playing Slay the Spire um I introduced some friends to it I definitely got some people into this game and just yeah never had the chance to to fully play it through i have a bad habit of introducing people to games and then they all start getting on it's multiplayer we're playing for like two weeks and then i just mm. leave i leave and i never come back and it's i don't know why i do that it's not, it's not very nice um oh i did have one other work question too if the stream will still work and not cut us off um uh, Taylor, what what is the life of a breaking news business reporter? You say you start at seven, but what are you like? What's the rise and grind and 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 the the day to day for you? Oh man, well the nice thing about working in business, I guess, is that I work mostly on business hours, and so you know sometimes business people are up early. But the reason my day starts that early is because if there's news breaking, that's when it's happening because companies like to get up early in the morning and post announcements. And so if something's happening, then I get up at seven and then maybe by seven Oh five, it's like, Oh shoot, you know, I got to call McDonald's. Uh, so sometimes <laughs> my days are like that. Um, but I'm Is like it? a generalist and I'm often aggregating other people's reporting. So usually like I get up, I, you know, sift through the world wide web and see what's going on out there. And then if there is something urgent or something that it seems like we should cover, then I write kind of a quick pass through at it with very minimal knowledge at that point of the day, to be completely honest. And then through the day, I kind of build it out after that first pass goes up and, you know, maybe get to talk to some people or get some documents or some research that can help flesh it out. And then my day wraps up in the afternoon, which is really nice for my Slay the Spire regimen. I've been racking up ascensions pretty regularly every day, so... It's going pretty well. Is it hard to call up McDonald's? Because Mikhail can chime in here, but the one thing that I find interesting about reporting on the gaming industry is it's actually not that hard to get in contact with the press contact for a studio or a developer. Um, you just do a quick search of the company and press and you at minimum has have like a press at developer.com email address. Um, now, whether or not they get back to you is a different story, but I'm just wondering, Mikhail, you can correct me if you think you've had a different experience, but I'm wondering like if you're trying to contact McDonald's or Capital One, that feels a little bit more difficult. Like how do you even, it's you know? It's totally 100% the same as the thing oh, that wow. you just said. <laughs> that's what's okay. really nice about business. And I mean, sometimes that's what I hate about it, just to be perfectly honest, is it can be really hard sometimes to get to a person who is not being paid just to talk to you. Uh, but that is also nice because, you know, unless they're scared of you for some reason or, you know, for whatever reason they may have not to talk, for the most part, you know, businesses like are happy when the press comes calling and people are pretty responsive when they think that they can gain something. from it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that is the, that is the problem then is then you talk to people who want to tell you this specific PR pitch and yeah, definitely. Um, it'd be nice to talk to real people. 
but uh okay got it all right so i i would love to have ronald mcdonald's press email just just to have <laughs> i'll slide it along don't worry because <laughs> yeah you know there's probably a time where some happy meal is going to come out with like a league of legends um you know happy meal toy and you just you're gonna have to write that up um in in some some capacity um so got it okay well Mikhail, sorry, I think I cut you off like twice there. No, not at all. I am, I am like, my head is so in the game right now. Uh, this, these elites might be the death of me. We'll see. I'm gonna use some potions. I'm gonna, yeah, definitely. Uh, let's check my discard pile. Let's see what I've uh, played already. Uh, these guys don't look very nice. They also don't really have great posture. <laughs> no, pretty bad posture across the board. Let's see. All right. I think I have a good strategy here. Maybe. Oof, we'll see. I don't know if there's any particular, like, strategy or mechanic to these guys, but, okay, there we go. At least you one. You should try and kill the furthest guy to the right first, because after a couple of rounds, he has an effect where he makes it so you can't attack, and that's annoying. Oh, okay. Yikes. Oh, nice. Okay, I think I'm gonna, you know, take a stroll through the Nintendo store, which I spent do all too often. Not that you guys were trying to convince me, not that anything's trying to convince me, but uh, no, looks you fun. should definitely, you should definitely get this game. It's great. All right, I think um, I think I might walk away from this one. To be a good, Unscathed. good final note to end on. I think so. We'll see. We'll see. I still have to win. I haven't won yet. And if they do the attacks they're planning to do on me, they will kill me. So uh, that part is not great. Now I think I might be safe. Uh, I might not be safe here. Now that I think about it, actually. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna buff myself as much as possible because otherwise I think I'm going to get owned. Um, Taylor, besides Slay the Spire, what else are you playing in the afternoons once you're done writing about business people and McDonald's? Oh man, let's see. Well, I've got a lot of friends staying with me at the moment who play a lot of games. So we've been playing lots of party kind of fighter games like Duck Game. Have you played that? You're ducks with guns. You kill each other. It's pretty fun. I have not. No, I can't even type right now because my keyboard is uh, not not working. But um, I will look. I'll look that up. We've also is... been playing similarly. We like boomerang foo. You're a bunch of pieces of food and fruit, and you kill each other, and it's cute and it's pretty fun. Nice. I, I see a unifying theme here. Oh um, yeah. So you guys are playing a lot of, like, couch co-op games? Uh, I think, you know, we all play different games, like, outside of that, but for, like, a group kind of thing, you know, either we're doing a group Slay the Spire run, and that takes a really long time, and there's lots of debating, or sometimes you just want to mash a bunch of buttons. We also like uh, Fantasy Strike. Have you played that? Well, no, but I was... No, I haven't. I, I would because I was also going to recommend Towerfall, which I think is my favorite Nintendo Switch couch co-op. Okay, co I haven't piece. heard of that one. It's from. It is a game from the makers of Celeste, and I think they. I think they released it pre pre Celeste, and um, it's a. Uh, yeah, right. It's a. It's a dungeon. Well, not really a dungeon. It's kind of like a Super Smash, but archery with pixelated characters wow. and my friends yeah, would love fun, fun. <laughs> all my friends are smash players so 
That's like it's like melee, and then everything is rated like in accordance to how it compares to melee. So that's a good sell. Oh yeah, well I think it's on sale, so um, definitely recommend. And Mikhail, you won. I did. I did. I was. I really scraped by at the end there, uh, but I did get some good. I got a good relic out of that. I got a good potion out of that. It is not clear to me how much longer I might survive at this stage. I'm in for, you know, a, a, an unknown experience, a treasure chest, and then either an elite after which I can heal or just a series of fights against pretty standard enemies. So I don't know. Things are looking pretty tough for me if I continue this run, uh, but... I think this might be a good moment to wrap. How are you two feeling? I'm good. I just, chat said that Taylor has a vinyl of Slay the Spire, which I, I have to just say exactly as written. Well, actually, no. As it's written is, quote, Taylor, bust out your Slay the Spire vinyl, which... Okay, so <laughs> yeah, that's more. actually my brother who gave me the Slay the Spire vinyl, so he's kind of repping his own Christmas present there, but... I do uh, own <laughs> Hollow Knight and Slay the Spire vinyl because of my brother, which is a pretty sick gift. Wow. 10 out of 10. That's a great way to get a uh, uh, compliment to your own gift. Sorry, Mikhail. <laughs> <laughs> no, all good. I was just going to say Hollow Knight is another one of those games where it's like, I got to get to this. Everyone tells me it's so good. And I just haven't had the opportunity yet, which is a bit of a bummer. But someday, someday soon, I hope. I'm gonna get oh, unhooked. Yeah. I'm gonna get unhooked from Valorant someday. <laughs> uh, I'll stop grinding in that game, and then I'll I'll play all the other games I've been neglecting. So. <laughs> See, this is why this is why I cannot play games like that because uh, I did. I played Overwatch, and then you just don't play any other game because it doesn't stop. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> get off the grind and, and join join the uh, the non updating games, whatever you call them. Oh um, yeah, non non live games. Yes, yeah. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for this episode of Press Play, where the press comes to play. Um, thank you so much for joining us to the chat and also to Teddy and Taylor. It's been great having you both on. Uh, do either you have Do either of you have any any stories you've written recently that you want to plug? Anything like that? Oh, man. Taylor, you can go first. Okay. I do have one. Uh, if you haven't heard about it, uh, I recently wrote a story. If you haven't heard of the thing and not my story. If you haven't heard of Buy Nothing, which is a really, really cool uh, kind of global movement slash circular gift economy is what they like to call it. But basically, if you want to be in groups of people where you get to get stuff for free and get rid of your stuff for free and know that it's going to somebody who, like, actually wants it and can also you know have some human interactions and cut down on waste and stuff buy nothing is super cool and i wrote a long story about it if you want to see more about it so you can just look up uh my name taylor telford at washington post and i'm sure you'll find it there it's a great read i really liked it um and buy nothing groups are the type of groups that i look at on facebook when i'm on there once every three months and think oh that would be nice if i was organized and together and did that <laughs> and and then i just don't so um i thought it was a good read uh Maybe. okay i guess oh sorry i didn't mean to oh, no, i, I guess good. not i uh my plug mikhail will be that uh, i wrote an article today about skyrim modders a decade later and how those modders, not uh, some of the most prolific modders, are now game developers, and so they've turned their hobby into their job. And it was really fun talking to the half dozen people I did talk to, and then three of them ended in the article. And um, it was uh, I don't know, just a nice way of like you know taking something you really like and getting good enough at it that people now pay them for for that work. So. It's fun. It's a wonderful read, and the the people I sent it to who know a lot about Skyrim, who still play Skyrim, and there is a shockingly large number of those people. They all seem pretty impressed, seem pretty pleased with that piece. So you can go to 
launcher.gg, and I think it'll just be right on the homepage there. Uh, but both good stories to check out. Uh, thank you both again for joining us. And to the chat, if you liked what you saw, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Every YouTuber has to say it. Every streamer has to say it. Like <laughs> and subscribe. It's important. Um, and click that notification bell to get alerts when we go live. We're live every Thursday and Friday at 4. So join us. And thank you all for joining us today. That'll be all. Bye, everyone. Thanks, guys. <laughs>